I'm someone that spends my day job trying to reduce emissions. But more than that, I spend my spare time chatting to people about the steps that they could take to reduce emissions at home. I even started a bloody YouTube channel to, to try and help. One of the anecdotal points that keeps coming back is that it's better to run your old fossil powered car into the ground than it is to go to an EV because of all the emissions associate, associated with manufacturing. And that makes some sense and maybe it's right, but I've never done the maths on it. So in this video, I'm going to try and get to the bottom of that assumption. Okay, so here's the idea. It takes a load of energy to mine the natural resources, to process them into steel, batteries, rubber, plastic, all that kind of stuff in order to make a car. It takes energy to transport those raw materials to a factory and then to assemble them to make a brand new vehicle. But then an electric car is substantially lower emissions than a fossil car in use. So at some point, those manufacturing emissions what we sometimes call embodied carbon will be paid for. But when would that be? So let's do the maths on a few fossil cars on the road. So first we have a five-year-old petrol hatchback. Fairly efficient, it averages around 50 miles per gallon of fuel or 50 MPG. So if we look at the methodology for reporting emissions and the greenhouse gas conversion factors document, this would have emissions of around 189 grams of CO2 per mile. So for 10,000 miles per year, we would emit 1,890 kilograms of CO2. By the way, I still have a petrol car and that average is just under 50 miles per gallon. It's a seven-year-old Nissan Pulsar. So if we did 10,000 miles a year, I'm emitting almost two tons of CO2 in our car. Ouch. Next, we have a diesel car of a similar age that also does 50 mpg. For 10,000 miles, that would emit 2,259 kilograms of CO2, just over two tons. I did a quick Google search on average MPG and the website nimblefins.co.uk, which I will assume is trustworthy, lists the average MPG for petrol cars as 36 miles per gallon and diesel at 43. So a bit lower than what I've assumed already. At those efficiencies for 10,000 miles a year for petrol, would expect to see 2,625 kilograms of CO2 emitted per year, and for diesel, 2,627 kilograms per year. Fairly close. And finally, if those are the average figures, there will be a lot of cars on the road that are below average. And maybe these are the ones that we're talking about when we say, I'm just going to run my car into the ground before I get an EV because of embodied carbon, etc. The cars we're talking about could be the older cars that are not quite performing as they did when they were new. So let's say that there are some petrol and diesel cars on the road getting around 25 miles per gallon. I actually hired a fairly new car on holiday this year that did exactly that over a 500 mile road trip. Ouch, used a lot of fuel. But at 25 miles per gallon, you'd emit around 4,518 kilograms a year for the diesel and 3,780 kilograms for the petrol. Again, doing 10,000 miles in that year. So depending on fuel efficiency, emissions could be quite high. Okay, they're the fossil vehicles. What do we need to think about for an EV? How much do we emit using an electric vehicle? Well, we sometimes get a little bit confused about this one. There are no tailpipe emissions from an electric vehicle, but we do tend to charge from grid electricity. So again, assuming the greenhouse gas emissions factors from the emissions reporting methodology, we can see that for 2023, we assume that the grid electricity in the UK has emissions of 210 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. And what about fuel efficiency of EVs? Well, this varies depending on their size and a few other variables. So let's look at a few examples. A big car with efficiency of three miles uh, driven per kilowatt hour of electricity, a medium one at three and a half miles and a small one at four miles per kilowatt hour. Before you come back and shout, I'm using these as an assumption. I'm sure there are cars that are much more efficient and cars that are probably much less efficient, a bit like the fossil assumptions earlier. So for 10,000 miles driven in, a year, in one year, the electricity to power the big car would have emissions around 690 kilograms per year, the medium one 591 kilograms per year, and the small one 517 kilograms per year. So significantly less than those fossil vehicles we looked at earlier. Now we're getting somewhere. 
And we could say that replacing your fossil car that you drive 10,000 miles per year with an EV could give you an emission saving of at least 1.2 tons per year and up to four tons of CO2 per year, which is amazing. Okay, so now the key question uh, that makes all this calculation meaningful, how much CO2 debt were we in when we bought the new electric vehicle? And this one is a little bit trickier and I'm not able to show the workings as simply, but it depends on where the car was made, how big the car and how big the battery is, how far the car traveled, how far the resources traveled to get to where it was made, all that kind of stuff. So let's try and find some estimates. Carbon Brief, who I think are a really trustworthy website, they have a fact check, check article that lists a new Nissan Leaf built in 2019 in the UK. It says that that would have embodied emissions of around 10 tons of CO2. A Leaf is a mid-sized car, and I think this is a fairly meaning, it's fairly meaningful to use this as an estimate. And with 10 tons, we can do the maths quite quickly. If 10 tons are emitted to manufacture a car and we save around 1.2 and 4 tons per year driving it, that would give a CO2 payback of between two and a half and eight years and four months. Some cars may be lower embodied emissions, others higher, but let's assume 10 tons is a meaningful average. If we compared the average EV with an old petrol or diesel car, then the payback looks really, really quick. And we're saving it on, on emissions almost straight away. Okay, so an EV will be much lower emissions than your current car and it would pay back its debts between two and a half and eight years. Or to put it a different way, in miles, it would pay back in between 25 and 80,000 miles of driving. So from a CO2 perspective, is there any reason to wait? Both a fossil vehicle and an EV would have emissions associated with it, but the EV would reduce emissions that substantially that it would start to start making a difference quite quickly. And with any simplified calculation, there are a few other important things to consider. First, the electricity grid is likely to reduce in emissions over time. Those payback figures are gonna get better and better. Second, if you can charge your car overnight, so avoiding the peak demand where electricity is most dirty, or charge it when the wind is blowing, the emissions from the current grid will be lower. And you'll become part of this massive decentralized battery that means we can use more of low carbon electricity and need less of the high carbon electricity at peak times. You may even have solar panels on your house or your neighbor may have solar panels that are exporting to your house. Or you might think about getting solar panels now that they're giving you free miles. This would mean that the emissions for driving could be near zero and not zero because we should count the embodied carbon of the panels too, but that will pay for itself eventually and that's getting a little bit pedantic. And next, we should consider what will happen to your old car. If you sold it on a second-hand market, then maybe you would still have some responsibility for those emissions. If you scrapped it, some of those materials and the embodied carbon in those materials could be used for good. So you could maybe claim back some emissions from them, because obviously a fossil car also has some embodied carbon too. And the fossil car has been building more and more emissions every mile it drives. At, at some point, that's going to have to stop. So let's assume that the car was five tons of CO2 in terms of embodied emissions when it was manufactured and when it was bought. We can then see that for our car, it's done nearly 100,000 miles, which would be nearly 19 tons of CO2 in mileage. So a total lifetime emissions of 24 tons of CO2. The equivalent EV with embodied emissions of 10 tons would be able to drive 235,000 miles for the same lifetime emissions as our old petrol car. Okay, I'm starting to come to the conclusion that we should ditch our petrol car and move electric and the sooner the better. So far, my assumption has been that I'll be getting a brand new car. What about a car that already exists? A car that's already started paying off its embodied emissions. The second-hand EV market is getting bigger and bigger, and ZapMap says that there are already over 810,000 fully electric cars on the UK roads. And if you look at Autotrader, some of those are already being sold secondhand. So if we could sell or scrap our car, we could then buy secondhand. And even if we took some responsibility for that car being manufactured a few years ago, we'd be able to reduce emissions fairly substantially and do it quite quickly.
Okay, I think you can tell I'm starting to get a bit excited. I need to start making the pitch to my wife so we can spend the money and make the move. And actually, I haven't even mentioned the cost of running a petrol car versus electric vehicle. Again, with some of the assumptions I've already made and the cost of fossil fuels versus the cost of electricity at the moment, and an electric vehicle's running costs could be cheaper than your old fossil car. A fossil car could cost between 13 and 27 pence per mile to run uh, just on the fuel, whilst an EV could be as low as 5 pence or as high as 10 pence per mile to run. So if you did 10,000 miles per year, this could be saving you between 300 pounds and 2,000 pounds per year in fuel costs, which is meaningful. And then one final point to make. Am I really just interested in getting an EV because it's a fun bit of tech that I would enjoy using and driving about in and that I would probably make a video about? I mean, yeah, it would reduce our emissions, but so would driving less. A little example, my parents sold their car last year and that was a big step. A car gives a lot of freedom to people, but mum and dad made the call. They can use buses, they can travel on the train, they can walk, they can ride a bike to where they, where they need. And if, they, if needs be, they can get a taxi. Rather than going to an electric vehicle, could we go car free? What would it take to go car free? I commute on my bike in Durham um, and there's actually a car club in the Northeast that we could use if we ever really needed a car called Co-Wheels. Or we're actually only about 250 meters away from a car hire place, uh, depot over the road that we could use for, for the longest trips. We would save on fuel, insurance, maintenance, all that kind of stuff. And what about saving all those resources that go into a new car in the first place? And actually, we've already been chatting to our friends, Mim and Sam, who live around the corner about car sharing. They moved to an electric vehicle back in 2021. I actually did a video with Sam uh, a couple of years ago asking all about it. And they have quite a low range model. It probably does less than 100 miles for a full charge. It was one of the early Nissan Leafs. So when they need to travel long distances, they tend to borrow someone else's car. They could borrow ours and leave the EV with us when we needed it. Do we need our own car? There are a lot of options. So what should we do? Should we ditch our old petrol car for a new electric vehicle or a second-hand electric vehicle? Well, I think the numbers suggest that yes, we should, and we should do it as soon as possible. And that would be progress in the right direction. But even better than that, could we ditch the car altogether and walk, ride, bus, train or hire a car when we needed to? That might not be perfect for us, but it's worth thinking through, isn't it? If you have to use a car and you were able to afford a secondhand EV or to lease a new EV or get a loan for a new EV or you, if, if you had all the cash to buy a, a, a new car outright, if you are able to afford an EV generally, then what is stopping you? What do you think? Does the assumption that you should keep driving an old fossil fueled car stack up in terms of emissions or in terms of cost and in terms of your lifestyle today?